So you are after a GPU for about 150 Aussie dollars that has more performance than the GTX 1050 that you can buy new for the same price. Well, I've done the research for you and have found the best GPU that is regularly available for $150 from both the green team of NVIDIA and Team Red's AMD. First up is the guidelines and rules I used to make this a fair competition. Number one, each GPU had to be regularly available for $150 Aussie dollars or under from places such as Gumtree, eBay or Facebook buy and sell groups so that these prices were available to as many people as possible. Number two, both GPUs were cleaned, brand new thermal paste applied, then overclocked to release the maximum potential in game. Number three, all games were benchmarked to 1080p resolution at the exact same settings three times, whilst also trying to match the same inputs each time to create the fairest test I could. Number four, I used the exact same test bench configuration minus the GPU and had the most up-to-date stable driver for both graphics cards. Let's see what cards are on offer from each side. For Nvidia, I managed to find the GTX 780, which can generally be found for $150 to $200. The specific model I have here to represent the 780 is an EVGA Superclocked Edition with a twin fan active cooling system. This card features 3GB of GDDR5 VRAM on a 384-bit memory bus. For display options we have one DisplayPort 1.2, one HDMI 1.4, one DVI-I and one DVI-D. This card requires 250 watts of power to operate which is supplied by one 6-pin connector and one 8-pin connector with the minimum recommended system wattage being 600 watts. I managed to overclock the core of this GPU to 1113MHz from its boost clock of 1063MHz and the memory to 3225MHz from 3000MHz. AMD is offering is an R9-290X which can generally be had for $150 to $200 also. This specific model I have here is the Gigabyte WinForce Edition that has a massive 3 fan active cooling system attached. This card features 4GB of GDDR5 VRAM on a massive 512-bit memory bus. For display it features one DisplayPort 1.2, one HDMI 1.4 and two DVI-D connectors. This card also requires 250 watts of power to operate which is supplied by one 6-pin and one 8-pin with the minimum recommended system wattage being 600 watts. I managed to overclock this card's core to 1075MHz from its boost speed of 947MHz and the memory to 1350MHz from 1250MHz. Now I've introduced the cards, let me introduce the test bench. Red Rocket is comprised of a 6700K clocked at 4.7GHz at 1.25V on an Asus Maximus 8 Impact motherboard with 32GB of DDR4 RAM at 3000MHz. The GTX 780 copped a beating in 9 out of the 10 games as well as Firestrike. 
GTA 5 was an interesting one as the 290X had a lower minimum by 1 FPS, equal average but a higher maximum. Most of the numbers were close, but in a few titles like Doom, Battlefield 1 and Hitman, the 290X really showed its superiority over the 780. In conclusion, the winner between these two is obvious, with the 290X dominating the 780 and also having an extra gigabyte of VRAM which will really help modern titles as well as future ones. The only silver lining I can see for the 780 is having Nvidia Share, which is superior to AMD's recording software, which may be something to consider if you wish to record, stream or screen cap certain things, but for raw performance, the 290X all the way. If you enjoyed this video leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it please consider subscribing for more graphics card benchmarks and other videos in the future. If you have a suggestion, question or criticism leave a comment, and thank you very much for watching.